Transformation Thursday retreat session um, live from our virtual studios. Um, we are Native Women Lead and we are so delighted and thankful for all the support that you all have shown the entire Transformation Thursday series. It's been just phenomenal to get to spend each session with you all and today um, we have just a tremendous panel of just fierce women who are going to share um, marketing magic with us all. So we're super delighted um, and grateful. I just, I continuously, every time I come into these sessions, um, just say like gratitude on repeat. Like that is like me on a loop, just so thankful to each and every one of you, to all of our panelists. Um, and it just, again, it is just so amazing that we started this six weeks ago having never done any virtual sessions and then to be filled like right now we have 45 people who joined us and made time um, on their Thursday to um, just share in this community space it really is such a valuable community and it means so much to each and every one of us at Native Women Lead so thank you share with you our agenda we are going to have a welcome we'll share a little bit for those that are new um, background of this series. Know that we are we have recorded all of the six sessions. We are currently going back with the help of our um, amazing uh, closed captioning support, Felicia Nez, um, and she is captioning all of our videos. So um, we are looking to have that in the next week. So know that you can always go back and see um, the different sessions. Um, we will have Kind of grounding intention setting here in a bit we'll introduce the panel we'll get to deep dive into thinking about our marketing vision have um, q a so all the questions that you have um, just have them ready and warmed up we're really excited um, for today's conversation um, and again like our community agreements we really want to recognize that like living in this pandemic is really hard and that some of us are working with children playing on the floor, <laughs> with children napping, like myself, all of these things that we are showing up in probably our most fullest, like to do this work together. And so be as present as possible. Um, our community at Native Women Lead really recognizes that Native women are the backbone and that sometimes that is not as picture perfect as we want it to be, especially right now during the pandemic. And so we just welcome you to like take care of yourself throughout our session today. Know that it will be full recorded. So if you miss something, you can always come back to it later. Really grateful to the um, New Mexico State Indian Affairs Department who has supported this entire series, continues to be a huge support of Native Women Lead and Native Women Entrepreneurs in the state of New Mexico. And we're really grateful for all the ways that um, the indigenous representation at our state level has really helped formalize a lot of this um, really some financial support to be able to create series like this. Um, so we're really, really grateful um, to our leaders at the state level for their continuous um, engagement in the issues that we put forth. All right, so I'm going to also just say that our um, retreat series is um, <clears throat> really meant to be of service in this time, um, this really unique time of need between the pandemic and the way that it's impacting our communities to the um, uprisings in support of Black Lives Matter, that there are just incredible movements happening um, at a societal level that we are, we know that we're holding this space within. Um, and also that we invite this particular conversation today to occur in this little bubble and unit that we have here. Let's for this time um, invest in ourselves as Indigenous um, women entrepreneurs, 
to be able to be in community. We know that magic happens when Indigenous women come together, which was very much the reason why we wanted to continue this, um, this series, which was supposed to be in person and then now has become just as meaningful over these six weeks, knowing that we gather um, together each time um, to share in ideas, to share and support one another. Um, so thank you all so much for making this space so impactful um, and just powerful and full of medicine from all over Turtle Island. It is really um, just amazing. And so with that, I want to give a big thank you and a big welcome to our retreat coordinator, Jennifer Wuhan, who um, has just been a phenomenal support and like rock star in the behind the scenes and on screen like technical support for this entire series. Like she really is a powerhouse and I've been so fortunate to work with her in curating this series. So Jennifer, welcome. Thank you so much for your kind words, Jacqueline, and the feelings mutual. I am the one who is honored to be working with such amazing women. So um, thank you for your energy, um, your medicine, your experience, your expertise as well. Um, um, good morning, everybody. Um, as Jacqueline said, my name is Jennifer Lujan. I'm the retreat coordinator for this series. I am from Isleta Pueblo here in New Mexico, as well as the Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa. Um, I'm so honored again to work with and introduce these indigenous women, the co-founders of Native Women Lead. Um, today is the last Transformation Thursday retreat of the series. Um, and I sat at my computer this morning looking out the window, um, reflecting on the last six weeks and the community. Oh my gosh, you guys are amazing. Um, the amazing speakers and the panelists, the wealth of information and experience in your backgrounds. Um, you all are phenomenal. And these co-founders, like you, I, you all are putting this all together. Um, they dreamed up a world where indigenous women entrepreneurs were supported and had access to equitable opportunities because they believe and know that they are the backbones of our communities and families, as Jacqueline had said. Um, NWL is uplifting matriarchal systems being entrepreneurial models that support the health and wealth of tribal communities. Um, and we've seen that throughout this retreat series. So, Thank you to the organizing team of co-founders for bringing us together today to dream. Um, to Kim Gleason of Navajo Nation, to Jamie Gloche of Navajo, White Mountain Apache, and Kiowa Nations, Alicia Ortega of Santa Clara Powake Pueblos, Stephanie Poston of Puebla of Sandia, Vanessa Roundhorse of Navajo Nation, and Jacqueline Russell of Navajo Nation. Okwami Am and Stay Strong Sisters. Um, but before we introduce the panel and get started with the presentation, um, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it back over to Jacqueline, who's gonna lead us in a grounding and intention setting for this retreat. So a short breathing exercise, and then we'll go ahead and get started. So again, we want this space to be a space where you're invited to bring your whole self. Um, and some of that, I think has to start with breath. And so I encourage you to get comfortable. Um, if you wanna turn your screen off, you're more than welcome to, um, but go ahead and plant your feet on the ground. Um, and as you're kind of getting comfortable in the seat that you've, um, you're in, I ask for you to place one hand up on your, on your knee and your thigh, and then the other hand down. So again, this kind of symbols the idea, um, symbolizes the idea of being open to receive the gifts of this moment and our space together is the one hand open. And the one hand that is um, placed down on your thigh is really meant to provide a grounding. So a connection to yourself, your values, your vision, your desires and dreams. And sitting in this position just want you to take an inhale as deep as you can, noticing the air come in contact with your nose and nostrils, your throat, 
Let it, the movement in your chest and your belly expand. Breathing in just that gratitude, that vitality of our day and our life. And then when you're ready, exhale. And then on this next breath, I want you to take a deeper inhale. Trying to expand your belly just a little bit further. And then exhale. And just on your own, breathe in. Gratefulness for this space. Gratefulness for your breath. In this moment and this time, our breath and the way that many of our peoples give offering and blessings like with this breath and this life, that it's such a reminder and connection to the Holy Ones. And just in this moment, appreciating the miracle of this breath as it moves in and out of you. And begin to um, move the fingers on your hand that is placed open and your hand that is placed down and come back to our space together. Just with grounding and appreciation and openness for our time together today. Thank you all so much for being here and I'm going to hand it um, and welcome our moderator and co-founder sister Jeff Poston, who is going to introduce our panel um, and be, um, again, the facilitator and moderator for our conversation today. Thank you, everyone. Welcome, everybody. I'm so excited. Thank you for that um, grounding, uh, Jacqueline. I that felt really good. As a moderator, you know, you get a little uh, nervous uh, stepping up to the plate here, but I'm super excited um, when I get a call to action about getting um, some incredible marketing people to the panel. Um, the response was amazing. And so I'm really super excited about everybody who responded. Um, and it's a huge treat in store for you. Um, I recognize on the Zoom screen, a lot of my fellow marketing comms people. So welcome. Um, I've talked to some of them about what would you like to hear and learn more about. And and in that uh, light, we curated the session and brought to you some powerhouses. Um, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Again, my name is Steph Poston. I'm the owner of Poston & Associates, a boutique marketing uh, comms firm. Uh, I've been in business 18 years now. I am from the Pueblo of Sandia, and I'm also one of the co-founders of Native Women Lead. It's been a, um, a very, an honor to work long, alongside the other co-founders. So I really appreciate that. So one of the first folks, one of the first panelists I will introduce is um, Jacqueline Tacarante. Um, I've been following Jacqueline on social media um, a few years now. Um, and it's always a treat to get just a different perspective because she's coming all the way from the East Coast. Uh, from Staten Island. She's the biggest and the baddest PR thing happening out there. Um, and we're just really excited that she took the time, is joining us, um, and we welcome her to the Native Women Lead family. So, Jacqueline. Sure, well, first off, thank you so much for allowing me to have this opportunity, this platform. And I was a little emotional when the music first started because I've never seen so many beautiful women that look like they could be my sisters. And so this is a whole new journey for me. So I just want to say each of you is absolutely gorgeous. Um, so a little bit about me and my background. Um, I'm originally from Texas, born and raised, uh, moved to New York about 12 years ago. I started my boutique PR marketing firm called JMT Medium. And our goal is pretty simple. We connect big box, billion dollar companies with nonprofits because one of the things that we learned over the past 20 years is really connectivity to the community that will elevate everyone. And so we are a small staff of five. Um, I have two babies. So anyhow, I just wanted to say that we're gonna talk further about that. Um, 
If you're following us, I'll put in the chat box our website because we have a six week step by step guide that we're offering for free to nonprofits, small businesses, retailers. Um, and so that's that. But thank you. Thank you, Jacqueline. Appreciate that. Our next um, panelist, uh, Christelle Ciarza, she is the social media go-to person in New Mexico and for sure in Albuquerque. Um, you know, I joined a uh, webinar she offered early on into COVID and was really impressed, but I was impressed before that uh, because she always comes on very impactful, giving you information that you can really use um, and really forward thinking. And she's not afraid to uh, collaborate and form partnerships. So uh, having said that, I'll, I'll turn it over to her and she can talk a little bit more about who she is. Morning, afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is, uh, as Deb mentioned, Crystal Ciarza. Um, I see some familiar faces as I've been clicking around um, and seeing everybody. You know, I appreciate the grounding exercise, but I get so distracted that I was like, hey, I know it's a couple of people that are on the webinar, which is really exciting. Um, and like I said to the women um, before the call started today, um, it is an incredible tremendous honor to actually be asked to speak in front of Native women. Um, I am not of Native descent. I am actually of Filipino descent. And Steph and I have actually spoke on panels together and there's something really humbling and um, very at peace with being around those that are Native, um, Native communities. Um, and and it, there's so, 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 so many similarities between Filipino culture and Native culture uh, being family-oriented and multi-generational in the home, et cetera. And so um, I'm very um, appreciative of, of being here today. Um, I uh, wanted to tell, tell you all a little bit about my organization. Um, so CR is a social digital, is a digital marketing firm. Um, we are based out of New Mexico, but we have half of our team in the Philippines and half of the team here in the United States. Um, we've been really fortunate to work with some really great brands and organizations um, over the years. Um, we work with finance, health, health and medicine. We work with nonprofits. We work with uh, travel and tourism and um, events, which has greatly impacted our business at this time, um, government as well. Um, and we're and we're mostly focused on on really spending a lot of time just telling the story of the individuals that really make the organization or the nonprofit succeed. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions related to marketing or digital. Um, I'm also myself an entrepreneur, um, just a little bit, uh, since there's women of, of leadership here, um, I currently serve on the Mayor of Rio Rancho's Task Force for Economic Development um, and Recovery during COVID, post COVID. Um, and then I also am working on a, an exciting new project to benefit um, small businesses and entrepreneurs of Asian American descent. So Asian American Pacific Islander descent. So um, it's a really big honor to be here and I hope that I can help you all be successful, especially um, as uh, Native women. So as you can see by their introductions, uh, we have some really amazing expertise at our fingertips today. And so I hope you, thinking about the questions, but um, for now, I, I, I talked to some, as I mentioned, I talked to some colleagues, like what, you know, how do we um, reimagine, how do we radiate, how do we refresh our marketing? Um, as a comms marketing person, you know, I've certainly have been in the middle of pivoting and I don't know all the answers. And so I really have talked to some of my colleagues about how we can be more impactful, how we can really support tribal communities and other people of color with our marketing skills and expertise. And one of those includes like, how do we, you know, from the news, if anybody's been watching the news, some of the challenges are the impact to uh, tribal communities and the unique processes that need to be in place to do proper outreach to uh, and relevant and culturally competent uh, outreach and marketing to those communities who need support during this time. So having said that, I would like to get started with a couple of the questions and, and either one of you can chime in, but 
what is one or two things each of you can share to reimagine what your business could look like during these times that you can put forth that would support um, the listeners? So two things, you know, I always tell people that when me as a small business owner and I'm talking to other small business owners or even nonprofits that are, thank you for chiming in to say what industry you're from. I always remind people, you know, I squeeze a dollar out of a dime all the time. So I, I get it. Um, but the first thing I remind everyone when we speak with them or do any panels, even on the tourism side, first thing we say is you have to imagine like, so this was actually really appropriate to, to sit on this panel because if you're looking at your business to grow in the next five years, 10 years, cause that's the goal, right? Nobody wants to just be a hobbyist forever. You want to grow your business. Uh, one of the first things that we tell people is look at what the pie in the sky idea is and then work your way backwards. Like, how are you going to get there? And it's all one step at a time. Um, so the first thing I would tell people is really truly imagine like, sit still with yourself and say, well, how big do you want to grow? How small do you want to grow? Um, and even for myself, real life experience, you know, I always tell people also that I do things um, in practice, not just in theory. But when I first started my company, I was four months pregnant. And I'm, I remember pitching to people, I have my laptop, I have my portfolio and everything's ready. And I remember people kind of, unfortunately, a little dismissive, like, well, you're a woman and you're a woman of color and you're pregnant. Like, how big do you want to grow? And I, I let that sink in for like two seconds when I started my company. And then I waited until my son was about two or three. And then we grew into an office space. And then we grew into hiring staff. And I had to imagine what I wanted my agency to accomplish and how it needs to grow. And it's the, so when I say the word imagine, imagine does not necessarily mean that you are a $20 million business with 500 employees. Yes, that's a great goal to imagine and to achieve, but at the same time, is that part of your community and a part of your lifestyle? So that's one of the first things that we really talk about is imagining. Um, and then also the second thing is um, partnerships lead to innovation. So for us, when we look at our company, our media company, we primarily focus on public relations, marketing, and design, and we do some social media, digital media. Um, over the COVID crisis, beginning in March, you know, our team has training, working in radio and TV, and I thought to myself, you know, we can certainly go online and do these Facebook chats, and we created a thing called Community Corner, um, but how is my company going to have legs beyond this coronavirus? So we looked at local influencers in a hyper-local 10-mile radius, and we connected with them so we can do true cross-promotion. So when I talk about innovation and next steps, I'm always looking at true partnerships that are advantageous for both parties. Before I even answer the question of like, what are one or two things that we can share to reimagine the business? I think for us as sometimes we, with us owning marketing agencies, we sometimes don't get to do the marketing side and we don't get to as often as we'd like to, we, we have to focus on the business rather than in the business. So one thing I, I want to definitely mention is the fact that um, for those of you that are employees, like we had to think about making sure in our agency, our employees were okay. They didn't lose trust in us and they didn't think about losing their jobs we refocused as much as pop, me as an owner, or as a manager, re-emphasized the importance of them to the team and how influential they are to do marketing for their clients, for our clients, but the clients that they're assigned, um, how important it was for them to focus on them um, and don't worry about our company. Um, and luckily, you know, I'm very vulnerable when I mention that you know, when, as I mentioned, the, the six or seven different industries that we work on, you know, events was our jam. You know, we worked, you know, I, my background is actually doing social media for Balloon Fiesta and working with PR agencies, Albuquerque and National Balloon Fiesta. And then all of a sudden, Balloon Fiesta is gone, right? We were supposed to be working um, for all the wine festivals in New Mexico. Now they're all gone. And so, so to pivot back to the question you know, what did reimagining the organization over time and, and, and what did it look like? I think um, it really made us focus back on the core of the company, which is the employee. 
Um, I know I want to, as much as I want to say the marketing, we had a surprising amount, maybe it's just because of the way that we work with our clients. Like we had a surprising amount of our clients that said that we know marketing is usually the first thing that goes, but we felt like it was too important to do because everybody's at home and we need to market online. So it was humbling to see that the, the products and the services that we have didn't have to pivot. pivot. I think what we had to reimagine is what does the team look like over time because they were my main investment as an organization. But in terms of marketing though, um, I'd say that if, if, you know, what did we look at pivoting? We looked at not changing what we currently had. We looked at adding, like um, improving upon our website process, improve, um, introducing new advertising. For me as an owner, I had to actually digital marketing was great, but I had to actually look at traditional advertising as a way to bring in new business, which I, you know, at first I was like, no, I don't like it. But at the same time, like I understand how important it is because we're after people and after businesses that are not traditionally on online, but want to go online in the first place. So they have to look at traditional outlets, et cetera. So I think if I was to summarize, you know, my answer is like, what are the two things to reimagine what my business could look like? Um, I had to reevaluate what the team was going to look like and how the team was going to function. And then I had to really focus on ways of expansion because we had a very, um, it, we had a very ambitious goal of getting to about $600,000 um, in revenue. Um, though I don't think we're going to get there this year. I know we're going to get there over time. I, I think you gave some ideas about like, what can you do uh, to reimagine, but if you could get even more specific, like what did you do in your own company um, to refresh your own business and your own marketing vision? Again, I'm always about keeping things in practice and not just having these pie in the sky ideas. So um, we actually played around a lot and I, I was actually inspired. I don't know if um, any of the guests, if any of you saw on Netflix, there was a show called Pandemic. It was like a six part series. And I know it's pretty intense, but so here it is like the day before, it was like March 14th, right before New York state was shutting down. And I'm watching this now. I have a one month old at the time and I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, the world's caving in, what's going on? And of course you watch Netflix, right? Cause you're quarantined to your home. And so one of the doctors that was on there, his name was Dr. Jacob Glanville. And he was just a very no nonsense, practical person. And I thought to myself, I want to interview this guy. I don't even have the platform. I don't even know how I'm gonna interview him, but I'm gonna shoot him a Facebook message. And why not? Let's just see how this works out. Um, so I literally was like, hi, Dr. Glanfield. This is Jacqueline from James Media. I'd love to interview you because the coronavirus is a brand new concept here in Staten Island and New York City. Um, and clearly you are an expert in your field. Can I do a live feed with you? And he was like, absolutely, let's do it on Sunday. So I'm like, holy macaroni, like I messaged him on a Friday and I have 48 hours to figure out how I'm going to do a live broadcast, produce something that's professional because it's going to have my, remember everything you do has to be with intent and with purpose and it has to look branded beautifully. So me and my team are like trying to figure out what we're going to do. And so we finally found a couple of solutions and um, these are kind of like the, the next steps or um, what did we do to refresh um, our platform? So there's three different things that we would suggest. So of course, people are using Zoom, which is the platform that we're on now. There are also two other platforms that we recommend. Um, one was BeLive and one was um, StreamYard. Both of these allow for beautiful graphics behind you. I mean, it looks like you're in a TV studio and something that can be done remotely. Now at the time I'm thinking, okay, I'm just gonna have him on the show, he's gonna come on and things are gonna be great and we'll go from there. With me just trying, because I was curious, which is what we'll talk about on question number four, me just being curious and trying this out has now led to an, another whole different division for our company because we now have everyone from electeds to big brands to nonprofits that are like, can you stream yard or produce our platform? So now we've produced real estate companies, like four part mini series. We've produced nonprofits, diversity trainings for them. 
And so because I took a chance on playing around with it, even though I didn't know all the exact tools, um, that has now become a new source of revenue for our business. So as we talk about, I'm going back to your question here, as you talk about what have you refreshed in your own business's marketing vision, the one thing I would tell you is, again, imagine, be curious, and then just activate, play around, see what resources are out there. And so, you know, both of these services are under $30 a month. Um, and so I would highly, highly recommend it because right now visibility is credibility for your brand and for your company or for your nonprofit. Um, you know, a lot of times people say you shouldn't be on Facebook more than two, three times a day. There was a moment, and I'm sure a lot of y'all saw this on y'all's news feeds on Facebook. It was like every 20 minutes, somebody was popping up, doing a show, somebody was doing a webinar, blah, blah, blah. And now that the quote unquote dust is starting to settle here in New York state, we're in phase two. Um, I always say the, the cream is rising to the top, right? The people that started the online digital platforms are the ones that are now getting those contracts to have that um, additional revenue resource that are that's coming through. So that's what we do. We we were curious about it, we acted on it, and then we executed it. Thank you for sharing that. I think my takeaway from that is to be to be bold. I, part of um, just to add to what you've said is um, I'm in the middle of rebranding as as a marketing person. I didn't take the time, so. I'm in the middle of that and stay tuned, but it, it, it is a bold move, right? To sure. invest in your company, even though um, a lot of our stuff has been um, canceled. I'm with you, Steph, and, to, and for me in our organization, um, like I mentioned, like making significant investments into traditional advertising was actually something that was not only scary, but the right move for me without a doubt. But uh, along the same, you know, to echo what Jacqueline said, so we actually started, we just listened, right? We listened to what people were asking for genuine help for. And the first one was, how do you, uh, you know, in, the, in April, um, we presented a webinar related to how to prepare yourself for a reopen um, of the pandemic. And that's where Steph, Steph sat on it, among others in, in Native Women Lead. And we realized, that people didn't know how to plan. And so we had to teach people how to plan their marketing out, which was really exciting for me because you know strategy and planning for me is like absolutely what I love to do. So that, that was a big thing that we got to share. And I think another thing that we were able to refresh in the marketing vision was um, how do we approach operations and how do we approach the way that we build certain things and so it again it gave us time to really work on ourselves um but in terms of ciarza i think the the biggest thing um besides the website and besides traditional marketing is we really became authentic even more so now than we already are um, our core values in our company is community diversity innovation um and quality and so diversity came out as soon as BLM started, where even myself, I said, you know, I said the phrase all lives matter, but I began to realize that yes, all lives matter, but right now black lives do, right? And so that became very apparent for us as an organization that my entire team wanted to really use um, the conversation of diversity as our differentiation as an organization as a whole. And it made us be really, really authentic. And I think that was the biggest pivot during the pandemic that made us realize on, on how we can, we can be different with the way that we marketed. Um, even now with, with um, and you'll see um, that social media day is coming up. And, you know, yes, community is a big part of our core value where normally social media day for us is a holiday where we celebrate each other and we, we celebrate the social media influencers in the community. But then we also celebrate the um, uh, how social media brings charities together and helps fundraise. This year we're pivoting where we're actually trying to benefit and raise awareness for entrepreneurs of communities of color, um, such as Native Women Lead, Hispano Chamber of Commerce, the African American Chamber in our local community. And to us, that's more important than using social media day to um, promote ourselves at CRSA. It, it really helps 
rebond re the core value that we have within our organization. So I'd say that that's the biggest pivot that we've seen over the last 90 days is, um, you know, really making a focus towards diversity since it's already been in our, um, in our core values. I'd say also in, um, in the chat room, some of y'all are, are opening the doors and putting things on pause. And uh, just like Christelle was mentioning that, um, you know, we knew that the doors were going to be opening sooner rather than later. Um, so that's why, you know, I mentioned it and it's in the chat room and I'll post it again. It's a, uh, it's a guide to help you even basic understanding. So if you're an, a DBA and you're wanting to, to transition to an LLC or from an LLC to a sole proprietorship, like there's a lot of different tools um, in this document because I see some, some notes here. And first off, anybody that's opening the doors, kudos to you for, for keeping the momentum going because it's, it's a hard thing. It's not uh, easy. Thank you for both for sharing that. I, I was watching the chat and I, um, it was, was made me smile. One of our co-founders, Vanessa was like, marketing is her Achilles, like Achilles, like, um, and she doesn't, uh, she's feeling like she doesn't know where to start. So I don't know if you want to chime in. I mean, we're going to take more questions later, but I thought it, it, it is, I mean, even for me in marketing, it took this long, uh, for me to jump in and start rebranding my own company. So I don't know if you all have some thoughts on that. Yeah, I was going to say, I know, I know Vanessa, I remember the, the moment I met her and I was like, she's a powerhouse. As soon as I met Stephanie, she was a powerhouse too. And I wouldn't, so here's, I'm noticing that there's a lot of individuals that are individual solopreneurs or social entrepreneurs. Um, and I think that one of the things that I, I'm starting to see is that normally solopreneurs think I have to have an entire marketing budget and I have to do advertising. I have to do the traditional route. I always recommend for people like Steph and like for Vanessa is just keep on doing what you're doing, right? Spread your knowledge to where you're not undercutting your value. Um, you know, strategically look at the individuals that you need to network to help you expand your network and be, and, and really grow your referral base um, and most importantly, be, be proud, be confident, and be the individuals that you are, because I think there's something electric about solo entrepreneurs, that all you need to do is just stick to your message, which is you are the subject matter expert in this. Like Steph, Steph's name has been around the Albuquerque area for quite some time as being the communications and marketing expert when it comes to Native American communications. Um, and, and Kim, I see Kim on the line. I see April on the line and the same, same theory applies. It's like, all you have to do is just be proud of your heritage and show how much you know about it. And then from there, um, you know, carefully, you will see careful marketing kind of follow through. Same theory applies to me. Um, apparently I'm the subject matter expert on social media. And I say apparently, because I know that there are so many people that are out there that do what I do, um, and do what my team does. But I, I consistently take opportunities like this where I can speak about what, what I feel is the marketing influence and how agencies really play, play different than, than contractors and how our agency is di different from another agency. And, and, and just being out there and putting your name out there, as vulnerable as that is, really helps build a baseline for what marketing should be for solo entrepreneurs or people at the helm of their organizations. So that's, that's my thing. Like, yeah, somebody, Jamie says founders, representatives that, you know, founders rep their brands because they are the brand. Absolutely. Like, I know that he's not a man of color, but like Richard Branson is somebody I really look up to um, because of the fact that he is the brand that he has. Um, and, um, you know, my, I've, I've want, wanted to be like him um, in respect of, the, you know, what do I want to build? I want to build an enterprise, not just CR is a social digital. So mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm with Jamie on that one for sure. I wanted to ta um, add on to what Crystal is saying. Um, you know, a lot of times solo entrepreneurs, you, you start off and it's very important to start off what we call the low hanging fruit or your community, your circle. But one of the things that, you know, we've taught seminars and, and workshops on at least once a week, we tell people to try to plant a seed with someone not in your circle, not in your industry. Um, just because you never know when it's harvest season. That's what we, we say. And so the reason why I say that is um, there was Shia that is a florist that was posting. Um, yes. And so 
you know, one of the things, the first thing I'm thinking of is like, oh, she could do online courses of how to take care of your plants after you purchase a kit or something from her, or how do you partner with a hotel or a small business, et cetera. Um, but, you know, talking about planting seeds, one of the things that we do is we try to connect with different, whether it's different chamber of commerces, different cities, um, different towns. And, but I'm very cognizant of, I try to keep it to like a 50 or 75 mile radius, someplace that I can drive to. Um, and then of course, planting seeds with partner, uh, it's partnerships is a huge, huge thing that's going to elevate both brands if you do it strategically and do it the right way with good intention. Again, it has to be positive intentions on both ends. Great feedback. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, Shae is, I, I love her boldness and everything she creates and uh, her beautiful flowers, her recent mask and shout out to my other colleagues, Kim and April and other marketing people. So welcome, welcome. Um, I see also Paula there. So welcome, Paula. The next question, um, I mean, we talked about marketing and branding and a lot of times it gets mushed in with public relations and that earned media piece. Um, and, you know, I've had clients say, you know, you know, I'd like to take this and be in the New York Times. Well, not every story is New York Times, uh, but, you know, we're looking and working with a press release and tar building a uh, distribution list, getting it out there, setting up the interviews. I mean, if you, if you all can talk a little bit about what are the latest PR tools that you use, um, and how, how do you, there, there's native media, um, which oftentimes I have a lot of good luck with, but how do you also get into mainstream media um, where you write a press release and there's not, there's your time that's invested and you have to put a dollar figure on that, but it's not necessarily um, uh, like you would buying a billboard or a, a, a advertising somewhere else. So either one of you can speak to, uh, public relations and press releases, tools, and how you uh, get people interested in that? You know, for me, um, pub public relations is, is uh, actually secondary to the social media and media work that we do. Um, and all I can say is just making sure that you're building relationships with people. That's the biggest thing that I think um, public people think like, oh, you know, I can't get a story. I can't get mainstream media. Um, a simple outreach or a simple email, phone call, comment, getting to know them on Twitter, getting to know them on Instagram, getting, re getting to, what I mean by them as a reporter, um, that's the easiest way, in, in my honest opinion, of how to gain the, the, local, um, the local and national attention that you need. Um, however, you know, understanding that, you know, public relations professionals get, or sorry, reporters get hounded by public relations professionals all the time. That's why relationship building is really key, um, in my honest opinion. Um, so it definitely does take that time. Um, and, and that's why for me, like, we don't have an area of expertise. So that's why Jacqueline, I'm, I'm definitely gonna, you know, toss the ball to you on, on this subject for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so interesting because we, so public relations is what we started with. And sometimes a lot of clients, a big part of this is education. So a lot of times clients don't understand the difference between paid and unpaid. So our company does 100% unpaid media. So what that means is when a client hires us on a retainer to pitch, whether it's New York Times, Crane's Business, whatever the case may be, I'm not going to charge them an additional advertorial rate. So. For instance, let's just say a full page ad in the New York Times is $10,000. I'm not gonna negotiate with the reporter and say, here's $10,000 for an ad and then here's a story. My job is to pitch the story as is and get a free article in the New York Times or Crane's Business, et cetera. So I wanna preface with this entire conversation with we do all 100% unpaid media. Last year alone, we had close to about 900 articles. So I say that not to be boastful, but to say we understand the process and the strategy for that. Now, Christelle is absolutely correct. You have to build a relationship. So again, in practice and not in theory, um, you know, if and we're gonna use this pen as an example, if this pen, the owner of this pen is like, I wanna be in New York Times. And I'm like, okay, um, what is the difference of this pen? Like, are you using ink from a specific plant? Are you using, What's the branding? What's the packaging? 
Um, and if you can't really answer those questions of what the significance is, then the value of your product, unfortunately, in a reporter's eyes, is not going to be as significant as a story because it's all about the story. And Shaya, I, th I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly because I see these beautiful Shia. flowers behind you. Um, but I'm assuming that these flowers behind you have this really beautiful significance um, to indigenous communities. And so the first thing I'm thinking of is like, oh, she can pitch to like Architecture Digest, like how to bring in this um, cultural diversity to your plants, to your landscaping, et cetera. And that can be a pitch, an angle, a story that they probably haven't even thought of. And they're like, because why? It's trending right now. And hopefully it's not just trending for the next six months, but it has a lasting effect. Um, that's the goal. But the other thing I wanted to mention is there are new PR newswire services. Um, I've seen companies use them where you pay a $400 flat fee, which even for me as a small business, that's a lot per client. So it's a $400 flat fee, you send your press release and then it goes out into the world and you'll have a random article in Bumtown, Ohio. Like, you know what I mean? Like you don't know where, where it's going, where it's sticking. Um, so we actually spend a lot of time, our team, creating master press lists. Um, and so what that means is I look at a specific product, so I'm going to use your beautiful flowers. I'm going to create a list of 10 to 20 media outlets that are specific about the floral industry, the landscape, architecture digest. Um, I'm going to connect with each of the reporters that has written a story that is recent and that is relevant to what my company does. So if you have Tammy that wrote an article about, like, if you have Tammy writing a story about orchids and that's nothing what you do, Shay, you're gonna reach out to Susan that's writing about indigenous plants, like because that is her beat about what your product is. So I know it sounds strange, but again, don't throw a hundred emails out there. Be very strategic and dilute, dilute, dilute down and re I shouldn't say dilute, more of refine, refine, refine down to your top 10 to 20 media outlets that you want to reach. And then from there, the reporter. So Alexis, I think you also have a makeup company. You said you're a model, which I totally tell. Um, but I would be connecting with like brands that are, and I'm sure you've already thought about this, indigenous makeup brands, but then how do you bring, take it out of that indigenous circle and take it into the mainstream? How are you gonna connect with them? So there's nothing a matter with starting your business off with what you know, right? You gotta start off low hanging fruit, you're hyper local, and then how do you break that out into something that's mainstream? It's, um, it's a lot of time, um, I'm just gonna be very honest, it's a lot of time and you're not just like throwing out press releases to 100 people, which you could, but that's a waste of time, right? Time is money for everybody. Um, so even with our team, we represent universities, small businesses. One of our um, clients uh, is St. John's University. All of their press releases are gonna be to geared towards education, technology, et cetera. So we're not sending their press releases to New York Times because there's no relevance there. Um, so anyhow, I'm, I'm with Jacqueline a hundred percent because that was the life I used to live <laughs> yeah. of doing the, per being the person that used to put those lists together. And I, and I get that. Um, but I will expand upon this thought really quick, not to, not to interrupt, but like no, sometimes no. if, you know, traditional media blog writers is something to consider in that list too, to, to totally apply to Jacqueline, but that's actually the basis of what influencer marketing is, right? A lot of people have heard like, what is influencer marketing? What does that look like? Well, it's people that have the same interest as you and having a key person in that specific space or that community actually spreading the message. So in influencer marketing, instead of the reporter, it's the actual individual, you know? And so that's my, that's my, um, my challenge to you all is if, if you are like, let's say for example, um, Alexis mentioned that she's a recording artist and depending on what genre of music that you're in, you know, you obviously want to tag or reach out to individuals that have large followings that can be influential and actually spread that word. Um, and then over time, what you start to see is that what, what catches wind on social media will eventually catch wind from a national, um, standpoint, like a, a national publication um, or, or somebody of that sort. The one thing that I will say um, to add to that is when you are pitching, um, or sending anything, and I used to be very, I know it sounds strange, I used to be nervous to, to lead in with this, 
but I always lead in now with as the only Native American MWBE in New York City, I look forward to connecting with you. Like, I kind of have to like, what does my girlfriend say? She says, you got to put the stank on it. You got to remind them who they're talking to um, because it, you need to separate yourself when press releases, email blasts, stuff like that come in. Um, so I would definitely utilize your hyperlocal, your community as an anchor to get through the door as well. Thank you. Um yeah. There's a really good question. I, I want to first speak a little bit to public relations and the earned media piece. And um, I know a lot of our folks are just starting out, but really our native media outlets like Native America Calling, which is based out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, oftentimes I get their uh, weekly show ahead of time and I'll look through it and see if there's a place for me to fit in or fit in some, one of my clients. And they're always open because you are helping them fill those panel slots. Um, the other one is Native Business Magazine. Indian Country Today is another one. Uh, Katen Radio. A lot of these Native media outlets, they're always looking for our story. So it's really, um, I, I feel like it's easy to, to get in there and, and get your stories heard. Um, but it, it was great information and great advice on like mainstream media, New York Times, Albuquerque Journal, Santa Fe, New Mexican, or whatever state you belong in their uh, main media outlets and getting uh, an opportunity um, for that. What are three things that a small business owner should do to create a basic marketing comms plan? If, if you're not that person, if you're in, selling a makeup product, if you're selling your soaps, if you're selling your artwork, if you're selling, you know, if they leave here today, what could they actually, yeah. what are some things they can do? I'll say this. So three things. So um, three easiest things for any organization to think about whenever they're putting their marketing together. Targeted audience is number one, who they want to target, who are the individuals. Number two, the key message meaning what is my voice? What is the message I want to say? What is the talking point? What are the pitch? What does the pitch look like? Message, message, message is really key. And number three is creative because we are a visual and we are an audio type of or, uh, society, especially with the, the, the references on social media. So keeping consistent to how you, how you visually um, portray your company what products how does your product look like like a sandwich can look good but a sandwich can look appetizing depending on your creative right um, and so those are the three things that I, I would definitely um, hone in on because um, it goes back to what Jacqueline was saying about public relations if you're spending a lot of time you know shooting shooting for everybody but you realize that you target your audience towards people that are most likely going to be your buyers or consumers of the product or service that you have. Those are really gonna be the key things. The reason why, for example, CRs is that we at CRs is say that we only have five or six different industries that we work with. Restaurants, uh, which I forgot to mention, restaurants and retail, um, government, um, uh, health, finance, um, nonprofits, um, and then agencies, seven being you know events, is because we know that we do that really well and we know how to speak the language, you know how to be very efficient to them. So we target those. We're constantly at networking events where other agencies are there. We're constantly trying to get in with medical people. We're, we're constantly trying to do advertising and marketing towards the finance industry, et cetera. So that kind of gives you an idea of how we have those areas of specialty. Um, and, and that's our target audiences at CRZA and everybody in this room will have a target audience without a doubt. So I actually look at it from even before you get out there, um, the three things. So for me, it's actually creating a timeline. You have to hold yourself accountable. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason for that is because, and this is not to be disrespectful to anybody, but you, I've already seen probably 20 soap companies in the past week through my social media channels, blah, blah, blah. There has to be accountability on the owner side because you have a product. And so what I mean by that is accountability when you're writing down your timelines, your marketing timelines of, okay, by July 1st, I want to launch. What are the goals that I need to finish in that month of July? 
in August, I want to have some sort of partnership. What does that mean? What does that term partnership mean? Does it mean I want it on consignment? Does it mean that I want a cross promotion with someone? So I like I would recommend for you to take a, a, um, a look at that. The other thing is, and again, this is even before you're hitting the ground running, the outreach side, the sales side, um, a lot of times small business owners are like, ta-da, I have my pen, I'm done. And I'm like, no, 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 that's just the beginning of your work. Now you have a product and now you have to pitch it. And it's not even to press yet. You have to pitch it to influencers, bloggers. Um, you even have to potentially send off products. I'm, I'm sure, uh, Christelle, with your agency, you guys have seen people transferring like product boxes to test it out, et cetera. Um, like that's a really, really big deal. Like a lot of times I tell my clients, well, how many calls did you make to pitch your product? They're like, well, I only made three. I'm like, okay, well, you got to like step it up. So for us, this is how I know business as well. Um, we have a certain quarterly number. So I'm in charge of all the business development for my company, AKA all the sales. So every quarter I have to hit a certain number to make sure that overhead, staff, salaries, all of that is taken care of. And so the, the same thing I would say for a small business, you have to create some sort of small budget, even if it's a budget for yourself. That's, oh, that's the other thing I was gonna say. Um, I was told 76% of female entrepreneurs don't pay themselves. And that's a huge mistake. You have to learn how to value yourself and how to pay yourself, but that's a whole separate panel in itself. Um, and then the third thing that I would recommend is phases. Like things need to be digestible. As a small business owner, when I started out, things can get overwhelming. So you have to understand, okay, phase one, I'm gonna, this is gonna be for two months. What am I gonna accomplish in these two months? Okay, great, I got my logo, I got my website, I figured out how to put labels on things so I can mail out my product, great. That's in the first two months. Phase two, what does that mean? That means you hit the ground running. You have to sell, sell, sell. Public relations, social media, email marketing, I always tell people it's like a big chili pot. Like you have to have all these things in your chili pot to work. You can't have one without the other because something will fail. Something will be lax in the other. So it's just not gonna happen. You have to have all of the ingredients to go in the chili pot. Um, Crystal, I don't know if you agree or if you've had the same experience. Oh, with that. whole hundred percent. And that's when it goes back to the plan, right? You know, like whenever you're drafting your plan, I see, I see April like totally nodding over there. Is that whenever we've worked with clients that try to hodgepodge things together, um, it just doesn't work. The quality of, uh, quality of the marketing just really, it makes me nervous because then me as an organization or my team, it doesn't look like the best reflection of our work. Yeah. over time. And so I, I definitely agree that um, coordination, planning, target audiences, all of that should really work well together. Um, and, and I think one thing that maybe the two of us didn't quite talk about that should be included in the plan is measurement of success. You know, measuring um, how many impressions, how many engagements, how many stories, like the fact that Jacqueline's like, I'm not, I'm not going to be ashamed to brag that we've generated 900 stories. That's great measurement, right, internally for her organization's success. So for you, like if you post something and there's not enough posts or, or there's not enough impressions or there's no engagement or there's, um, you know, barely any conversation, that, that can play a toll in the success of the, of the plan itself. And I know, I know Vanessa asked for three, but we gave her six and seven. I so <laughs> I said, that's, yeah, you're right. That's there's a lot. Experience. Thank you all for that great insight and information, but a great, just another tool to, if, if you've put out something is to put a Google alert out so you know where it's been picked up. Also, I wanted to circle back like, and there'll be more discussion on the Native Women Lead care packages. Um, we really tried to support Native women entrepreneurs, whether they had soaps, whether they had lipsticks, whether they had sage or whatever it was, and, and really curate those from the heart to lift up their companies, to support them, to advertise in their social media. And so those are other ways when we amongst ourselves can share and uplift each other's services and each other's products. Like it doesn't have to cost a lot of money that if we help each other, 
that that makes such a huge impact. Just a shout out real quick. We have like 60 people on this webinar. Um, seriously, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for taking the time. Time is precious. And so hopefully um, uh, all our panelists have uh, inspired and uh, given you a unique way to look at it and that you see somebody else in this Zoom room, in this Zoom family, in the Native women family that you are to connect with, to reach out to. Um, there's, you know, as Native women lead, we're always saying there's an abundance out there um, and we all just have to kind of tap into each other and support each other. So truly, truly with Native Women Lead, thank you from the bottom of our heart. We appreciate you being here and staying here and going the long haul with us as we um, do this grand finale. Thank you. You are your own brand. And I tell this to all my clients, I can help you get the messaging out there, but you're gonna know what beautiful ink you have in your pen.